Today I'm showing the jackpot extension for Genially. This extension has been made by the Sandbox team from Spain and you will need to download this uh, presentation and add the template slides to your own Genially presentation to use it. So it's not a built-in feature of, of Genially. So first I'm going to show you a few examples and then I'm going to show you how to use it. Jackpot is quite similar to R&D, if you've used that before, um, but it allows you to have several sets of items. So what it does is it draws a card from a deck of cards and there are different ways of doing it. So here's our simple example of just having one set of cards. In this case, the cards are snails that go along. So if I click the first button, they just go along in the right order until everything is finished then i get this message and i get the restart button and i can do it again for the second one you can see it kind of shuffles them and then chooses a random one and a third one just shows the next one but all the previous ones also stay visible so it goes along uh, as opposed to the first one where you always just see one at a time Okay, so you can do the whole thing with two sets as well and you can have, have separate buttons for each set or you can have uh, up to 10 sets or even more if you're creating your own codes. So here's our first set. So in this case, I'm pressing this button and I get the next of the blue animals and I've got a different button for the red set here. You can see I can go forwards as well. And then I've also got a set of buttons that work with both sets so both appear at the same time and I can reset both at the same time um, and as I said you can have lots of them not just two okay so here's another example this is like a little quiz so when you click start you get your quiz about Spanish um, Christmas and you get correct or false I click correct then I go to the next bit but here that's the wrong answer so I get sent back to the beginning another way of using it then the next two games use a jackpot in addition to another extension so you can mix and match them together so this one is also using uh, click and buy another extension from sandbox this hint box here is the part that uses jackpot so at the beginning I've got the instructions if I click the button the instructions disappear and I'm getting my hint so one at a time until I get to the end of all the clues, then this button changes here, as you can see, and if I cl click it again, it starts again from the beginning. And here's another one. This one is working with the D&D extension. So I, I draw a puzzle piece here, and every time I click the plus, I can put on the next uh, piece of this jigsaw, and then I can use the tick to check my answers, but they were wrong, so it's resetting them all here is the last example so here it shows you that again you've got two sets of cards so i can do each card individually or i can do them all together so if i click advance all it draws the next one for both piles or i can just do uh, one card at a time Did not work here we go so one card at a time until I've looked at all of them and then I can reset them. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use this extension. And for that, you first need to have those blue slides that are at the end of this presentation here because they contain all the code that you need to copy over. So first of all, you need to download this presentation by clicking reuse this genially at the bottom of the presentation. So you can find the link to it in the video description. and then you go to your own presentation and click add page then go to my creations then you look for the name so in this case jackpot and then it should appear so you then click on the presentation and then you need to find mainly the blue slides so all of these ones here at the end and then you add them to your presentation so i don't need to do that because i've already got them in here Okay, so let's start with this one. So if we just have one set of cards, 
you need all of these buttons. So the most important one is this orange one here. That just needs to go in the corner somewhere of, of our presentation. So don't group it with anything. Don't do anything with it. You might want to make it a bit bigger because the nice thing with this button is a, it makes the whole game work, but also if you make a mistake and for example, forget to group something, it will show here an error message. If I go into preview now, it will show me lots of red. Unfortunately, it's in Spanish, so I might need to use a translator to work out what you're missing. Um, so it's saying I'm missing the element and so on. So these are all the elements that I still need that I haven't got. But once I've grouped everything correctly, this orange box should be invisible. So it will only appear if there's a mistake. Okay, then really important is this element. And this element changes the label. So sometimes it's called this word here. I'm not going to try and pronounce it in Spanish, which I think means a uh, deck of cards. And sometimes it's just called set one with another number at the at the end. So we copy this over and we put it on our slide here. So we just do copy and paste. And this one is what we need to group with our cards that we want to appear or items that we want to appear. So in this case, we don't have cards. We've got these three animals in our set. Okay, so I just literally go control uh, C to copy and then control V to paste. And I make three different ones of these. So you see it's changed the name back to um, this Spanish word. But if I go to a different slide and then come back again, you see it changes its name. And this is quite handy because now I can see which order they're in because it's now zero, one, two. That's the order that I copied and pasted them in. Okay, now really important to understand is that Every time I group this item with something, it also changes the number. So if I now um, group this item, this element with my first picture, so I just select them both by holding down control and then I go to group. You see it's changed the name back again. And then I do the same with the next one. So I just group these all together. Now the names are all back to the original. So now I need to go out of the slide again and back in again. And now I can see the ordering. The problem is if I now ungroup this and ungroup this, and let's say I group these two first, it will then make this one the second one and this one the third one. So it depends on the order that you group items. So if I go out and back in again, so you can see here zero, then one, then two. So the order in which you group things is really important, which can be sometimes annoying if you've grouped lots of things and then you realize there's a mistake with a middle one, for example, and you have to ungroup them all. You can't just change the middle one. You will have to ungroup all the subsequent ones as well and then group them all again in the right order. OK, so now we've got our card elements, so to speak. And these can be icons, as you can see here. They can be pictures, they can be words. Um, anything really. Okay, the next one is the counter. We don't need to use it, but we can if we want to. So I'll put this in a corner here. And what I need to do is group it with some random text. It doesn't matter. It's just any text. I group with it. I don't need you need to change subtitle here. Group. This word subtitle will be replaced with a number that shows how many rounds have been played. So basically, how many times have I pressed the button? Okay, then these next two buttons. So we've got the end button and the restart button. The end button needs to be grouped with something that appears when all the cards have been used. So in this case, I want this writing here to appear that says no more animals. So the players know the game is finished or there aren't any more different animals. So I group this together. The restart button. OK, I want this to um, be grouped with my restart button. OK, so this will only appear after I've used everything. So this whole object will be invisible until I've used up all these items. 
And remember, you can have loads and loads of items. So in this case, I've only got the three animals, but I could have 30 different animals. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I could also use the disappear button. So this orange one here. What this does is it makes something disappear once the button is uh, clicked. And you can copy and paste this, so you could have several items that disappear. So normally you would group it with, for example, the instructions. So here, press one of the buttons. Because once they have pressed the button, they don't really need to see this instruction anymore. Okay, now I need to decide what kind of button I want. So there are basically three different types of button. The dark green one will do this kind of shuffle animation so that it goes through all the different options and then choose a random one so this is good if you want uh, yeah to to shuffle through a deck of cards or through uh, um, different pictures of dice for example okay let's see if this works so if i click go can see it goes through all the options and then chooses a random one so I can do that again and again okay this one will not show the restart button because it will just keep on choosing a random one forever basically you can also see if we go back out again that the press one of the buttons part disappears as soon as I press there we go so that is our disappear item Okay, let's try out a different one. So the light blue button chooses chooses the next item in the right order. So it will go from zero to one to two. It will always make the previous one disappear and then show the next one. Click here, cat appears, then disappears, the zebra appears, disappears, then the dog. And now because we've used all of them, it says down here, normal animals. You can see our counter has counted up to three and the restart button has appeared. And once I press restart, the instructions appear again and our number gets set to zero. So everything is back to the beginning. Okay, let's try the third one. So this one makes them appear in order but the previous one stays visible so you can see all of them one two three and again this one works with the uh, counter and the restart button okay so these are your options you can also add this black element you don't have to but you can add it that makes the um order that things appear random so that only makes sense for the light green button and the green button and so if it's it needs to be grouped with a word and the word needs to be either true if you want it random or false if you don't want it random so let's add this on here it's true i don't need to do anything with it i just stick it in a corner somewhere and now when i click you see it starts with the middle one because it does it randomly, then the dog, and then the cat, and then it restarts again. Let's try again. So this time it starts with the dog, and so on. So it's a random order now. So depending on the game you want to play. Okay, so you might have noticed that all these buttons have the number one in them. So we've got set one, counter one, end one, and so on. This is for when you have several sets. So now we're going to have a look what happens if you have several sets like on this examples. I've got the blue set and the red set. And I have different buttons for each set and I've also got overall buttons. So that's when this slide here comes into play. And you can see there are uh, five different sets here. So and they're um, color coded, which makes it a bit easier. So set one set two and so on so um if i have got a second set then now i go to set two so sometimes it will also be called the spanish word at the bottom there with a two um, 
so if I copy it in here you can see it yeah so you can see it's changed the name again so this is set two so I copy and paste this for my second lot of animals obviously they don't need to be the same pictures I just use the same because I was too lazy to find any other ones um, but as you saw in the card game it can be different cards okay so now I need to go out I'm back in again to just check yes now it's changed it to set two so the zero this, this will be the first one of the second set the second one of the second set and the third one of the second set then I also need the buttons for numbers for set number two so you can see over here we've got five sets let me see if I can zoom in so five sets of them so this time I need to use all the number two ones so the second column here for all my different buttons and so on if they only apply to the second set so let's use um, this button and this restart button so I just uh, click on it then hold control and click on the next one then I hold control and C so this way I can um, copy those two now I'll paste them in here we've got button number two and restart number two so I group them with this okay so now I can control the things individually so I can shuffle here or I can choose a random one there and I could also have a counter so I could have a separate counter for this one and this one okay and then the items here in the orange box you can see they're the same buttons as these ones here so this one is the same function as this one um, this one has the same as the blue one and so on but it has the word all at the end because it will apply to all the sets so I've got five different sets of animals or cards or whatever and I click on this then all of them would be reset so let's do that restart and shuffle I can so you don't have to have these all buttons if you only want uh, each pile to be or each set to be shuffled individually you can leave these out okay let's try it out if I click go it will randomly choose one animal for each set or I can do blue one on its own or red one on its own okay then if you've got more than five sets you can go to the next template and you can see here you've got set six to ten and if you need even more than that you can go to the very last slides these ones here these white ones and you can see they have all these um, extra buttons so we've got advanced card one so instead of that we want uh, card 11 change all the ones to 11 uh, that's it and I can change the color so you can literally just write the name of the color I think you can also use the hex code if you want to look that up let's try this okay so now what I need to do is copy this whole code then I go to insert other and paste it in there and then go to insert and now it's made me this big new button and you can see it's yellow because it's the color I've chosen it's number 11 so if I've got 11 sets of cards I can now use this for my set number 11 and I can make more items by changing all the colors and so on and the numbers and in the quotation marks here you can see what the name of the button is that it will create 